What's going on, Sumolings? Chris here from AppSumo. Super excited. I think this is our, this would be our first webinar of 2020. So very excited to get going with you guys today. Um, we have Ratchet here, who is the founder and CEO of StackBuy, which is on AppSumo right now, starting at just $59 for lifetime access. So super cool product we got for you guys today. Uh, if you don't know StackBuy, StackBuy allows you to create your own company-specific work management platform with customizable spreadsheet-style databases and business APIs. So it's a really cool tool. We're going to dive into it today. Before I turn the reins over to Ratchet, I want to go over two quick things. One, there will be a replay later. So if you miss anything or you got to pop out early, we'll send that out to you guys so you can watch it as much as you like. Um, and the second thing, if you have any questions as we're going through this demo that you want answered, hit the Q&A box below the video. That's where we're gonna be sourcing all of the questions once we circle back to them after the walkthrough and tutorial. Um, so I'll be going through those, um, but that is all I got for you. So without further ado, Ratchet, why don't you take it away? I see you already got your screen share pulled up. I will turn off my uh, video and uh, feel free to get going. All right, uh, thanks a lot, uh, uh, Chris, for the introduction. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Ratchit, as Chris introduced. So I will walk you through, uh, you know, what we have built. Uh, we've been on this for uh, almost three years now. So it has taken us quite a bit to, you know, get here. And I'm really uh, thankful to everybody in the community who have supported us, uh, you know, all this while, uh, you know, since the launch. We've received overwhelming feedback uh, from the community, uh, both positive as well as something that we could definitely improve upon. So I take a lot of positives out of the whole campaign. So I hope this, uh, this works out for you and I'll jump uh, right inside the, inside the demo. So, so basically, uh, so StackBuy, as Chris mentioned, is a cloud-based you know, software for, uh, which, which combines the best of spreadsheets and databases. Um, so basically, once you log in with your email address and password, you enter into a dashboard. Now, dashboard is where we are managing two things. One is a workspace. A workspace can be your company uh, as a whole, or it could be a department. If you're a large company, uh, you know, you have, you know, you need to create, you know, multiple departments. So you could, you could. So in, in the lifetime deal of, uh, of AppSumo, we're providing access to one workspace. So essentially this is what the workspace is. So I've already created a workspace and, and then within that workspace, you know, there are stacks. Now stacks are individual databases or individual workflows that you can customize according to your needs. So it could be project management, it could be a lightweight CRM, it could be a campaign management or a, or a product launch uh, you know, uh, checklist or a social media calendar. So you can really uh, you know, basically you know, utilize the platform and customize it to your needs. So because I've already created this workspace, I can add team members to this workspace uh, you know, and give them a permission whether they are owner, editor, or read only, and send them an invite. So once I send them an invite, they'll just be able to see this particular, uh, you know, see this particular workspace on their login. So now, you know, let me start by creating a new stack. So let me start with a very basic stack, say client project management. So I'll just give a nice spin to this and create a stack. I can also share uh, invitations and give invitations at the, at the stack level and send them an invite so, uh, so that they'll just be able to see this particular stack. So you can send this to your clients or internal team members who are just part of that particular workflow. So I enter into the platform. So it starts with a very basic you know, tabular view. So there are rows and columns. So for example, if I just create you know, a client's table, Say I'll just write, say client A, client B, client C, and client D. Now what I can do is, so every single row here acts as an object and every single column is one of the 25 different types of column types that you can choose from. So, so for example, uh, you know, this is, you know, if I want to write any long notes or description about that particular client, I could change this into a long text field uh, if there are any, uh, you know, if you can change this into a number based format, whether it's decimal currency or percentage, date and time, check boxes, drop downs, collaborators, attachments, then you can add phone numbers, emails, URLs. There are formulas. So formulas are also at the column level. 
And then there are some advanced field types like link that allows you to link between two tables. Lookup basically brings information from another table to this table. Uh, aggregate summarizes the linked records. Plus you can also connect it to third party APIs. So, uh, you know, these are APIs with popular services where you can pull information from. And I'll get back to you, uh, you know, on that. And then there is, of course, push message to send out messages, uh, you know, via Twilio, SMS or WhatsApp. So let me just quickly add one by one. If I want to write quick notes about this particular client. Client is a large Fortune 500 company. I can just write long text. However, I, like this. I can also then, you know, create a number based format and say, for example, write budget. So this won't, this, this will just take, you know, a uh, number as a format. If I try to write ABCD, it won't take. So essentially what we are doing is we're giving a structure to a particular column and that's how it separates, you know, itself, you know, uh, from a typical spreadsheet. I can add things like date and time, say, for example, what is the, you know, meeting date of the client. So I can just quickly add, you know, uh, date and and choose, you know, from a time. I can add things like checkboxes, say whether this is, say I've sent the proposal. I can add drop downs, say, for example, if I want to add in status, say meeting done, uh, proposal sent revision or onboarded. So I can then, you know, choose from a predefined, you know, status. I can similarly also add multiple tags, say, um, what, what are different types of, you know, campaigns or channels that the cl client have to, you know, to work with, say Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter. So I can add multiple tags as well. So all of this has the same kind of experience as you would find in a spreadsheet, like drag and fill or cut, copy, paste, undo, redo. Now this also becomes a collaborative, you know, uh, database. So you can add, you know, who's the lead, you know, for this particular client. So currently it's just me and Pratibha. So if I just say notify, you know, Pratibha, she would get a real time notification saying that Rachid has added you onto a particular record. I can also add multiple, you know, collaborators the same way. Now I can add things like attachments, say, uh, say client proposals. So I can add files here. I can link it to my Google Drive, Dropbox, OneDrive, even connect it to my Gmail to get the files, um, you know, Google Photographs, plus also just, you know, bring it directly from the computer. So I've just, you know, added a example PDF. So I'll just upload it. So, I, and then I can view it right inside the platform. So we have a internal image and PDF viewers that you can, you know, use to view, view your documents. Now, similarly, I can also add things like phone numbers, emails, and URLs. And then also I can also create, you know, formulas. So formulas are at, at a, at a column level rather than at a, uh, uh, you know, at the cell level within a spreadsheet. So for example, I have budget and I have spent and I'll also add this into a currency, say 500, 400 and, and this much. So if I create a new formula, you know, saying that what is the budget left for this particular client? And here, what I can do is I can uh, select a column, budget minus spent and show, show it, you know, within one of this, you know, field types. So whether it's an integer or a currency. So in, in this case, it's a, it's a currency and I'll just apply. So it automatically takes it up. So if I'm trying to write some more, I, 
I'll just automatically get a you know formula in this particular column. Now um, let me come on to some advanced field types. Uh, for example, if I want to also you know bring what time this was last updated or last created this record, so I can just create that column type. And it automatically brings me that information. So if I'm adding a new row, it just gives me a last timestamp that I can't change. So, so th these are all the basic, you know, uh, you know, column types. Now, for example, I can also directly, you know, import this data if I have it from a spreadsheet. So, for example, I can get it from a CSV file. I'll just select a file to upload. So I basically uploaded from the CSV and I say that, the, okay, this is a campaign. So I've got this, you know, uh, you know, CSV uploaded. Now I can, what I can do is without losing the data, I can really change the column types. So if I wanted to change this to long text, this goes to long text status converts to say, for example, single option field type channels goes to, you know, multiple options. Budget goes to number based field type. And similarly, uh, say this goes to date and time. I'll change this to date and time as well. So essentially you can quickly, you know, adopt to the format of stack by just by importing your data and without losing it. And this goes into a URL. Right. Now, what I can do is, um, you know, there are because tag by functions as a as a database. So the, the biggest point of the biggest benefit of databases are, are that you can, uh, you know, relate uh, between two records. So your 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 complete stack can be completely relational, you know, to each of the tables. Say, for example, if I want to link clients to campaigns and I want to see which client is signing up for what campaign I can what I can do is I can quickly create a column type called link it allows me to link to the campaigns table and I would say campaigns and apply. So essentially if I click here, all the records from the campaigns table show up and I can just hit and click that which campaign is going to what clients. Sorry. So me. So uh, basically you can you can then add you know different campaigns. I, I would ask uh, Pratibha and Abizar to uh, just uh, switch off their mute. Just can you can you do it on mute? I have some background noise. So I can, once I have linked, you know, clients to campaigns, essentially it shows up here, your clients table, you know, show up. Now what you could do is you can, if I, if I, if you want to bring up, you know, something via lookup based on the linked record, I can quickly do a lookup and say that, okay, I want to bring the clients, you know, budget overall here. So I would call it, you know, the budget, right? So essentially what it does is it takes, you know, the clients, you know, budget from this table and shows it up here. Now, similarly, what I can also do is um, if I now want to aggregate, you know, how many campaigns, you know, have been done by what client. So I can do like a lookup count, say total campaigns. And it basically counts the linked records. So if I'm adding more, it just gives me an updated one. I can see, you know, which campaigns are right here, you know, without even going to the, you know, individual, you know, uh, campaigns table. Now, similarly, what I can also do is um, how much, you know, have been spent, uh, you know, on these two particular campaigns and I can do an aggregation. So based on the linked records, I can aggregate, uh, 
say i'll take the budget from the campaign table and create a sum here and show it in currency so it just gives me an aggregation so when i'm adding a new record it just gives me a count and an aggregation of the budget right okay so this is how you could create something you know very powerful you know uh, from the scratch and it truly gives you you know uh, the power to you know create your own relational database for for whatever use cases that you have you know within your team now this is not the only view that you will see your data in what i can also do is i can change this into kanban style view say if i want to just uh, make it a drop down via status so all my records now become cards in a kanban and i can just drag and drop and it's completely synced across all the views so for example this becomes like a status pipeline right i can customize these cards you know based on the information that i want to see right i can also change this into a calendar view where say based on the meeting date where i can see all my records into like small cards within a calendar and i can also uh, you know give color color to this calendar based on the the color of the status for example so now all my records uh, are essentially you know you can individually open each of these records into like detailed views where i can still change the same information as i would change at the row level say i would make this client abc so it automatically changes here i can chat with my team members in real time say at pratibha what's going on this client right so she would get a real time notification i can see the history of the record when was this added who added it what was changed i can create individual checklist you know based on the client say um send a proposal negotiate and close so i can create checklists on individual rows or even i can set reminders so just remind me at this time and uh, so basically you can set a due date and then based on that you can set a reminder so this reminders can also directly go into uh, any of your slack channels and you can do it for all the other records that you have at that row i can also create custom forms so for example uh, now essentially all your columns will show up here you know of that particular table and i say i would call this you know a uh, client onboarding form i'll just add the things that i want to take it take from the client say the name the notes you know what's their budget um which channels they want to work with i'll just add quickly my logo change the color they call it client client onboarding form and basically what i can then do is i can i'll just hit on preview here so it basically creates a form a very basic form that you can share it with your clients or directly embed it onto your website say for example if i now right say stack by uh it's a spreadsheet style database platform with apis say budget is 2000 and the channels i want to work with is facebook instagram and linkedin and i can just submit it so as soon as i submit it i can see you know the record is submitted here and then i can internally you know change the you know meeting date you know what is the status you know add people to it or even like add attachments 
right? So this is how you could create, you know, a very basic form on uh, on Stackberry. Now, if I want to search something, uh, I can quickly search, you know, based on the record that I have. If I want to hide a particular column that I don't want to see right now, I can just hide it. I can quickly add a filter, say based on, uh, say status is proposal sent. So I can just look at those filters. I can add multiple filters. So essentially this works like a query. So, and budget is say greater than, or let's just say spent is, you know, greater than zero. So it just filters those records. And I can add as many filters as I want you know, based on the columns that I see. I can also quickly do a sort based on the same information, say by budget, right? By ascending, descending, or descending, ascending. So now I can individually change the row heights as well, you know, to accommodate all the information that I have, or even, you know, download all of this back into, you know, an Excel or a CSV. Now let me come on to some advanced, you know, uh, advanced things that, you know, that we're doing. So essentially Stackby is a API first, you know, platform. So we have integrations with, you know, various popular services. So if you look at, you know, customer support, data enrichment, uh, finance, marketing campaigns tools, or social media SEO tools. So we have integrations with Slack, Matamark, Clearbit, PageSpeed, YouTube, Google Translate, Intercom. And then there are some push integrations. So essentially, uh, let me show you how it works. So I've created, uh, you know, few basic stacks like uh, video production tracking, SEO performance tracking and needless builder. And I'll quickly, uh, you know, start using this stack. So imagine you're running, uh, you know, you're managing your video campaigns. Um, so not only you can plan and manage, uh, but you can also bring information automatically uh, from YouTube once your campaign is live or once your video is live on YouTube. So for example, um, what I've done here is I've created like a basic table, right? With all the column types that I showed you, but here I've, I've brought the YouTube video ID. So if I just quickly go to YouTube, and get a video ID from there. So you have slow internet. Uh, let's look at this one. So I'll just bring the video ID from it. And add it here. Now what I can do is based on this video ID, I can connect it to, you know, an API. So I want to connect this to the YouTube API. I just select a provider, which is YouTube. I've already added an API key, uh, you know, from my Google developers console, I, you can add it, you know, right by clicking here. I can select a YouTube service, which is the video details and select the ID, which is the video ID column to reference and hit apply. So I think there's some small error, maybe because of the internet. Yeah, let me just try one more time. So I'll just refresh this page. Just to see if this internet is working fine. connected to the YouTube API, the video details and the ID and apply. Okay, this is, okay, this is creating an issue. So let me, okay, hold on. Let me try, you know, another stack. So basically I've added uh, the company URLs here. Let's see if this works. 
I'll connect this to now, you know, this is like if I want to create my own lead lists. So I'll just put in a company URL. I'll connect this to an Hunter API. I've just added in Hunter API and select, uh, I want to bring, uh, say, email search by domain. The domain is the company URL. And uh, let's just say domain search. Yeah. So yeah, so it basically brings information. So once I open this up, so I can see my complete, uh, you know, response from the, uh, you know, from the API request. So we call it the data explorer. So based on the data, you know, that you, that you want to see, what you can do is you can just select that data, right? Say, I want to, I just want to get all the list of, uh, you know, emails that I, that I have. Right. And I'll just add it into, you know, particular columns. So basically it quickly brings, you know, all the, you know, lead lists, uh, you know, all the email, email addresses that I find from the, from the URL. And then I can also change this into, you know, a different, um, you know, based on the API data, I can change this accordingly to, uh, you know, to make it, you know, that it's an email. Similarly, you could use, uh, you know, another API, like an email count API from Hunter to basically see how much, you know, inf uh, you know, how many uh, emails do they have in their particular database. Say, for example, if I put HubSpot, hit refresh. So it just brings me, okay, they have 686 emails out of which 17 are executives by HR function or by marketing function. So already configured it. All I have to do is just hit refresh to bring the latest information. So this is how you could, you know, work with, with the APIs. So let me try, um, you know, this one more time and see if this works. So I have added the video IDs and let me just bring the YouTube video ID and apply. Okay, there is, there is an issue with this one. All right, anyway. So, but I hope, uh, you know, everybody gets the point. Uh, what I've done here is, uh, you know, you can do SEO audits. You can connect your column to a PageSpeed API where you can select, you know, one of the services uh, of PageSpeed, whether it's performance or SEO or accessibility or best practices, and just select the, you know, column, uh, you know, to reference. So, for example, if I just, you know, take... Um, I want to take the, just want to bring YouTube and see if the SEO works. So what I can do is just hit refresh. So the response is taking a little bit time. Yeah. So you can then see, okay, so whether, you know, the, you know, it's the crawlable is done, whether they have added the meta description, the robot.txt or document title. So if I just want to bring the latest information, what I'll do is I'll just select and, you know, just hit refresh data. So all of this information will be changed in real time. But you have to make sure that, you know, uh, you know, you, you know, the limits of, you know, a particular API uh, in terms of how many requests you could do per, per minute or per seconds. So different services have different limits and you'll find that onto our help center. So this is a little bit about, you know, the platform, you know, we have various templates, you know, across different categories that we've added and this we have, you know, built in conjunction with you know, a lot of our customers did a lot of secondary and primary research, uh, you know, to, to look at those, to build those categories and templates. So we have around 80 templates right now, and we are constantly adding more. So this is, for example, marketing, you could use this as campaign management or social media calendar or blog editorial calendar. You know, if you're using this as an HR 
purpose, you can use this as an applicant tracker tool. So if, basically, if you like this, say applicant tracking uh, template. So essentially, anybody uh, you know who's sending a resume to you and you're uh, maintaining, you know, what's your status on them, you can just use this stack and add it to your particular workspace. Yeah, so the stack is added and then just delete the information and you know, just adopt to this, uh, just add your information and adopt to this particular uh, database schema that we've already built out. And you could do it for all the other, you know, templates that you have. So yeah, that's, that's all, uh, you know, we have a very extensive, you know, help center that uh, basically provides video articles of all the, um, features that we have, you know, inside the platform. For example, this is a guide to the form view. So we've added every single uh, little detail about what you could do with this. So hope this, you know, becomes a very self-served, you know, platform. But if you have any questions, you can also, you know, chat with us right inside. Awesome. Thank you so much for going through all that. Yeah. Uh, the last thing yeah. I would love to yeah. see, if you could navigate over to the AppSumo deal page and just kind of walk through what is included in the deal. I know we have stacking as well. If you want to go over what's included in the different stacks as well, I think that'd be great for people. Yep, I will do that. So uh, here, here are the deal terms, right? So uh, on for $59, uh, you're essentially getting uh, 20 databases, 20 stacks within a workspace. So now think of it, these are 20 different types of workflows or it could be uh, bigger workflows that you want to repeat. Maybe, uh, you know, some agencies have, uh, you know, projects uh, that, you know, that they do, they have a checklist which is similar and they do the same things for each of the projects. So you can make this as a unique workflow or as the same workflow that you have. So you have 20 different workflows that you can manage uh, for two users. And uh, there are 10,000 rows per stack. So in total, you're getting 20 into 10,000, 10, which is around uh, 200,000 records. And for every single uh, you know, stack, you get 10 GBs of attachment space. Now, if you take two codes, you know, you're essentially getting five extra databases, but you're also getting 5,000 rows per stack and five GBs attachment space per stack, and you're doubling your number of users. And for every single code, you're doubling the number of users, you're getting five extra, uh, attachment space, five more databases and 5,000 rows extra. And of course, there are all the API integrations included. There's 52 week revision history. All the templates are included all the future updates, you know, based on integrations or, you know, advanced features that we add are included on the plan. So, so yeah, keep stacking, you know, uh, as much as you can. This is a deal. Uh, I, I really believe that can, you know, value a lot of, uh, you know, businesses. Uh, I know people have made comments on, uh, you know, on the deal structure, but uh, on the second day, you know, we changed the, we took a lot of that feedback and changed the deal structure according to what people wanted. So I hope this, you know, uh, this newer structure works for everybody. Awesome. Great. All right. Let's, uh, let's go through some of the questions that I saw pop up in here. So the uh, first one I'm seeing, can this, uh, can the view be set per user? So different views are based on user preferences. Yes, you can easily do that. So I'll, what I'll do is I'll quickly show it that way. So for example, this is your master view. What I can then do is I can create a duplicate layout of the same master. And in this one, I just want to see where uh, the status is only, you know, live, you know, live projects. So I can quickly create a filter say based on the status, the status is just like, so you can create views like this. Similarly, you can add filter, uh, you know, on, on your collaborator field type so that you can, you know, give it to, you know, your team members and they would just see this particular thing. So if you're changing anything from here, it just moves out, but it's all syncable to the master database. So if I just awesome. make this live, you know, live, so essentially see it in the live projects. 
That's great. Okay. Um, the next question I am seeing, uh, can the calendar sync with Google Calendar? That is in the roadmap. Uh, so we are working on the two-way sync between, you know, uh, uh, our calendar and Google Calendar. So you'll see most of the Google Calendar, uh, all your Google Calendar records, you know, pop up into calendar within Stackdash. So that's on the roadmap. Awesome. And I just, I just shared the link to the roadmap, but is there anything in particular you'd like to call out on the roadmap in terms of what you're most excited about, what's coming up, what people can, can expect? Yeah, absolutely. So let me just, I've just opened up the roadmap here. So a lot of people have asked us about Zapier integration and uh, people have also asked us, you know, whether we could use, uh, you know, data within stack by, um, uh, you know, into any of their other websites. So these are the two most exciting things that we're working on. One is Zapier and one is the developer API. But the other thing is, you know, there are a lot of, uh, you know, marketers, uh, you know, in this group. So we, we, we have all, almost finished working on the Facebook integration. So we are integrating with, uh, you know, the Facebook posts and Facebook ads API. So just bringing, just by bringing a post ID or an ad ID, uh, you could get matrix, you know, of, you know, of that particular, you know, of that particular post or an ad. So it could be impressions, clicks, likes, reactions, so on and so forth. So not only you are planning and managing your campaigns, but you're also automating your campaign reporting uh, with, with these APIs. Awesome, right. Um, so Craig is asking, can you group data or is there any plans to add that functionality? And it looks like that is, that is one of the things that's on the, the roadmap to group data. Yes, yes. So that is on the roadmap. So we are still collating ideas. I think, but that becomes a very essential feature for us as well. Uh, you know, so we will definitely add it to the, you know, to the pipeline and yeah, just deliver it, uh, you know, as we, you know, clear the backlog. Excellent. Um, okay. Next question from Alvin. Do you have consultants for a novice business, business owner like me to hire to custom build a stack for my company operations? Or what would you recommend for somebody who's wants to use stack buy, but is looking for help with that? Yeah, so at this point, we are, we are considering, uh, you know, the Stack by Affiliate and Partners program. So, um, you know, if more and more, so a lot of people have asked us if, you know, uh, you know, to become an affiliate or to become a reseller, uh, you know, of the platform. So we will be soon announcing, uh, you know, you know, how we want to go ahead, you know, with the platform. But at this point, you know, we can help you out. Our team can help you set up, uh, you know, your workflow. So it should not take, you know, much time. And uh, we are around the clock you know, we are, we are helping customers, you know, set up their uh, perfect workflows. Okay, cool, cool. Um, and then his Alvin's second question is like HR template, how is the sharing working? Is it role-based meaning the interview process has limited access slash view to add data, but not access to the whole file? So I don't quite mean, I don't understand uh, the question. Yeah, I'm, so, I'm a bit confused by that question as well. Yeah. So maybe Alvin, if you want to yeah. try rephrasing that to be a, a bit more clear. Um, but if you want to figure it, if you, yeah. yeah. So I'll still, I'll still just, uh, you know, use my best, best assumption. So you can definitely share, you know, this particular stack, right? And give role-based permissions to the users. But uh, okay. typically, uh, say for the applicants, you're going to create a form, right? And that form will be shared, that form link will be shared to uh, that particular applicant or it's probably embedded onto your website. So anybody that fills out that form does not really need to see this data, right? This is basically your data that you're managing internally. But you will, as soon as somebody submits the form, you'll get a record here. All right, cool. Um, and is there, is there currently a Twilio integration? Yes, there is. And so with that, can somebody send messages and make calls with uh, stack by using the Twilio numbers? So you can just send messages at this point. Uh, you cannot uh, make uh, calls. So essentially we have another column type called button that you can, uh, you know, you can get your Twilio API key um, and, you know, just configure a column type into a button, just reference the phone number uh, column type, and then you can send, you know, SMSs. So at a point in time, you can send up to 10 SMS, you know, on a single click. Okay. Same Excellent. goes with WhatsApp. Um, awesome. All right. Um, let's see. Any hope in getting a VOIP integration like asterisk? I don't, I'm not sure what that is, but maybe, maybe you do. 
uh, I'm I'm unaware as well. But yeah, we'll yeah. just add it on to <laughs> onto our roadmap and see if more people are asking for it. We'll just do our own research. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Um, and th that is uh, about the end of the questions that I'm seeing. Do you have any any last words that you'd like to say about this about this deal to uh, to Sumo Links before we before we hop off? No, just uh, you know, give uh, Stack by a genuine try. I know a lot of people have asked how is this different from you know existing tools. We are really bullish on you know the fact uh, you know about APIs. Uh, we believe the API economy is just you know going to uh, you know blossom. We are seeing more and more uh, people uh, you know utilizing services via APIs. And till today, uh, these services were accessed to only developers, people who knew how to code, right? So our vision really is that how do we give you know uh, access to a non-technical user uh, to create and customize their own tools and get access to these API APIs, right? To pull in information from, mm -hmm. you know, different services, completely no coding. So that's what yeah. we're, you know, we are, we are going after. So, you know, I won't term ourselves just a project management tool or just a database tool. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I would say that this is like, you know, we are providing all the building blocks for you to create and customize, you know, your own software the way you want. So awesome. great. Yeah. Just give it a try. And, you know, we are happy uh, collecting your feedback and we are taking all of that very seriously. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for, for taking the time this morning. And Sumo Links, thank you as well for, for joining us on this, like I said, this first webinar back from, from 2020. Um, again, StackBuy is available on AppSumo right now, starting at just $59 for lifetime access. Super cool tool. Again, it's all backed by the AppSumo 60-day guarantee. So feel free to play around with it. Get this set up for your business. See what you can do with it. If you have any questions, again, you can always ask those on the AppSumo deal page, or I'm sure you can reach out to the StackBuy team directly. But that is all we have for you today. Ratchet, thank you so much for, for hopping on, and I'm sure we'll be talking again soon. Absolutely, Chris. Uh, thanks a lot for hosting me. All right. You're welcome. Thank you. Take care, everybody. Thanks. And the deal is, somebody just asked, when is the deal live? The deal is currently live right now on AppSumo. You can just head over to AppSumo.com slash StackBuy. You can check out all of the, the deal details there. All right. Thank you, guys. Take care. Thank you, guys. Take care. Bye.